Hey, everybody. This is Justin Proper. Uh, I am with McBrooklyn and uh, General Zod. He's Mr. Zod today. We're all ghost face today. We are talking about Scream 2022 or Five Cream, as I like to call it. I'm so sad that they never made a poster of that. I like Five Cream. Five Cream's my favorite. I use it in my hair every day. Um, <laughs> um, yes, uh, Scream 5. Uh, the movie just came out on uh, Thursday night, and there was such a big hype. All of these YouTubers were saying how it was so amazing and it was great, but some of us have different opinions. So um, we're going to start out with just our general thoughts on it. We're not going to give anything away right away. Um, that sounded weird. <laughs> We're not going to give anything away just right off the bat. It'll be non-spoilers, and then we'll get to the spoiler section. By the way, guys, this is uh, pre-recorded, so and we're premiering it. So if you guys send in super chats, that's cool. Uh, just know that we won't see it because you guys are in the future. Um, so, anyways, um, McBrooklyn, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. And Zod, how you feeling? Well, uh, I'm feeling great. Do, do I get to say my tagline? I think I should say my tagline. Go ahead. It is the most earth freaking ground shaking, but never media show money taking the man, the myth, the legend, the most electrifying ghost face in all of YouTube entertainment today, Mr. Zod. Shut Hello the there. fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've all, you always want to say that every time I say my earth breaking, ground shaking, never show money making, man, myth, the legend, the most electrifying YouTube, blah blah blah. <laughs> He's been saying this <laughs> for, for three fucking years. There we go. There's the first fuck bomb. <laughs> so I'll start out with my general thoughts. By the way, guys, uh, we are all different ghost face. I don't know which one you are, Zod. I think it's from four. Uh, that's obviously Jill Roberts. Oh, spoilers for the other movies, by the way. Shaggy's the killer of the first one. <laughs> We've had 25 I mean, years. Can we really call it spoilers at this point? I was like 13 when the first one came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess for like younger fans, sure. But, you know, that's that's the risk that they take by going on the internet. Um, so speaking of which, um, I was very excited about this movie i was hyped up by the trailers i uh, did think that they spoiled a lot um and when i first watched it when i first watched it these are my kind of my general thoughts i had mixed feelings on this movie i was kind of torn i thought just as many great moments as many great moments as as there were in the movie there were just as many cringy or just you know awful moments as well that i was just kind of like Really, really, we're going this route. We're going this direction. I thought the reveals of, of the ghost face were probably the weakest in the franchise. Uh, I loved David Arquette uh, in this movie, but he did seem like he wasn't as Dewey-ish as he has been in the other ones. I missed the goofiness. I missed the like the fun aspect of Scream is kind of is kind of dwindled. I didn't have as much fun with this. All the other ones, uh, you know, had some sort of magical touch to it. The Kevin Williamson, Wes Craven kind of duo. They were so great with the, with the other, the other movies. Um, but generally speaking, I was kind of torn. Um, the kills were fine. Um, th like they were pretty good. None that particularly stand out as like, Oh, this is an amazing kill. Uh, maybe my mind uh, will change uh, at the end of the stream. Cause so I'm torn in between uh, McBrooklyn you have some thoughts on this. Uh, why don't you tell us your general uh, thoughts about the movie? Yeah, I pretty much agree with almost everything you just said. Um, so just kind of, I don't know, background. I'm a huge Scream fan, um, and I'm a huge movie fan in general. Uh, I was telling Justin earlier, uh, we've talked before, um, but this is our first time actually doing a show together. And um <clears throat> And it's a pleasure. We, yeah, we started, I, I we started really talking when the Mighty Ducks came out, which is the <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah, we well, I used that. to be a like Division One hockey player, so the Mighty Ducks are uh, also um, Ooh, close to my I heart. May I ask what team? Actually, you know what? I'll ask later. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, 
I collect movies. I spend about a thousand bucks minimum a month on collecting. So I'm a big movie guy and I've been meaning to kind of get into movie review podcasts and type stuff. But anyway, yeah, I was uh, hyped for this movie to say the least. Um, and then as you mentioned, Justin, the critics just raved about this movie. Um, and I was hoping that the marketing didn't give anything away. And I, I, again, I agree with you. I thought the marketing spoiled a lot of stuff in the film again to agree with you i don't think any of the kills stood out which is interesting because even the people that i see reviewing the movie uh, are talking about how great the kills are and how gory they are and i i don't like when i watched i've seen it twice now uh, for reference and i i don't see any of that what other people are talking about it's like we watch different films um also the killer reveal i agree justin again i i thought that was i thought the killers were predictable i didn't think it was that good of a reveal um and yeah i i to me this is probably under scream three for the worst in the franchise for me but even if i were to bump it up above three i still think it's uh kind of a bad film and that said I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad scream movie like i never felt like i wasn't in the scream universe so that's a positive i guess um and there i do have some positives with this film but we'll get into that later yeah when we were discussing this uh in the dms earlier uh you had some uh some some words to say about <laughs> about the movie yes. <laughs> not 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 all that great uh so i'm interested to hear the specifics uh now zod you loved this movie uh am i correct on saying that uh, what did you what did you uh, how did you feel about the movie uh how many times have you seen it uh give me your general uh thoughts on it well i have seen it twice this is probably going to go in my top 10 favorites for 2021 I'm already kind of saving. Hey, a that's slot so for last it. year. Or I mean, 2020. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Would it have I'm made keeping... the top 20, 2021 films? Would it have made it in there? Oh, oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, despite how, when I looked at my list, there were a lot more movies than I thought. I thought this was great. And I. I will tell you why, because January is synonymous, synonymous for releasing the worst movies imaginable pretty much no matter what year I went back, because I'm going to be doing top 10 lists for different years. Um, I understand and acknowledge the complaints. I'm not totally blind. People who come to my channel pretty much know how I do my reviews. I'm pretty, I'm pretty tough. I can honestly and truly say there may be a bias because I have personal histories tied in with this franchise. Uh, I saw the first movie when I was a kid. Um, I basically snuck in and then I tricked my dad into seeing it because I told him Drew Barrymore was in the original and I didn't tell him exactly what happens. So that was fun. You um, looked on the reaction on his face at the opening? Oh, 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 he was pissed. Um, oh, I of course, completely... of course, he was probably. <laughs> I can I mean, you know, th 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 think of it this slasher. way: who's who's like a big, who's a big star nowadays? Like a really big star, like a young, younger one, like Timothy Chalamet. That, that's that's the first person that comes to mind. Matt, uh, well, imagine him in like the opening of the movie, and you advertise him everywhere, and then he gets brutally killed in the first one. Like that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, that's, yeah, that's if, the, if you that's guys the don't level. know, like Drew Barrymore was huge back when I was a kid, and uh, so the promotionals, the movies were always kind of designed. And I God, I hate to use this uh, term because it's so inaccurate. We use these days, but um, they subverted expectations. The real meaning of subverted expectation, not the Ryan Johnson meaning of subverted expectations. But anyways. Um, so yeah, I, I, lo I love this franchise. I personally thought while I've been watching horror for a long time, I could understand people who are saying this is the most gruesome because in hindsight, I think it's not the kills are gruesome, but the manner to which they're done is probably the most vicious 
in the franchise, which if you've been following Scream for a while, you know that like, especially in the newer ones, they kind of have felt a little toned down. Um, Ghostface has never been like Jason or Michael Myers. So there's not really a level of brutality. And I felt just the emotion behind the kills might be have been what people were talking about, uh, especially in the opener. Um, so like there, there is, I think there's a certain brutality and sort of energy behind the kills that have, has been lacking for the past couple of films. Um, so I, I think that might be what people were referencing it, but, uh, I've seen it twice now. I'm probably going to go see it a third, maybe fourth time because I really like to analyze. Um, I liked it. Uh, I do agree with the reveal, but I liked what was behind the reveal because I've been going through the subject, which we'll probably get into later. I've been going through it a lot recently. So I kind of have a different perspective and especially in the horror community, uh, people can be very, very vicious in the way that they put things. I mean, just look at this movie and this clear divide between people. And I feel like this is going to be one of those movies where either you like it or you don't. And there's not really an in-between. Like right now, Justin's on the fence, but I think he's going to squarely land one way or the other. And I think this is going to happen for a lot of people. And I'm even going to predict, just to have it on record, I think this is going to be one of those movies when people look back, they're really going to uh, like just right now and the current climate of media and uh you know movies in general i think it's just very hard for people to distinguish things but i i thought it was great i thought for taking over for arguably two of the most creative people in hollywood uh these they did the best they could and i can honestly see this as more of a stepping stone to a great continuation as opposed of a return to form which i think a lot of people had in their minds and sort of hyped up um i love these directors i called since ready or not which is again one of my favorite films probably being on my top 10 for that year um i love these directors i think that they had the world down they just need to tweak their version of the formula. And I don't think you can really blame new directors coming into a, an established franchise trying to make their own kind of path. And I respect that because I never felt disrespected in the way that they went about it. It, it felt like two people who understand the universe, they like it, and they just want to make their own creative spin. Because you're not going to top Wes Craven. It's impossible. And you can tell by the way they shot the film, they weren't trying to. They weren't trying to shit all over him. They were trying to make their own path and go, hey, we know you love this franchise, but this is kind of our take on it. And this is where we're going. And, you know, you can come along for it or you can not, but this is kind of where we want to go. And I respect that. I, I do. I think this was the right way to go about sending that kind of message out to the fan base and neither people are really going to come along for the ride or they're not. And so. I completely agree uh, with that. The sentiment of, I don't believe that these, uh, the, the, the writers or the directors had any ill intent. They're, they're clearly scream fans as well, which is something that uh, th this is a trend that has been going on the last, uh, the last few months, you know, we've had Ghostbusters, Afterlife, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Scream 5, you know, the three three movies that I, series that out of all of them, uh, and, oh, and with Cobra Kai as well, um, with the TV show. Um, nowadays, you, you're having fans create these instead of just executives who don't care and just want to make money. Now it's all about like, hey, we got to give a good story now. Um, and a lot of a lot of this is just sort of, finally catching up there and i think everybody else will finally catch on but this is again hollywood you know being a few years uh, behind the trends and scream has usually been ahead of its time so it was very appropriate to have the sort of the, the twist that if you will um with with uh, the, the theme of this movie which uh, i have mixed feelings on but maybe again maybe my opinion will change and i know McBrooklyn 
hate like doesn't i don't how would you say you hated it or just you know it's, it's just the worst i'm just kind of uh, I, I i don't hate it i, I like yeah. i just think it's the worst scream film um yeah. i have to agree with uh zod though um I love these directors. Ready or not was my top film of 2019. Uh, so that gave me a lot of hope going into this film. Uh, and if you guys have not seen Ready or Not, please go watch that movie. Yes. Um, I, I saw that movie twice in 48 hours. It came out on my uh, birthday uh, two years ago. And it's phenomenal. Uh, if you like Wes Craven, and that's why that's I said immediately... Uh, that these guys were perfect to do Scream because you can see Wes all over Ready or Not with the comedy and the horror. It's it's a perfect film in my view. And I think that may even be another reason why I'm disappointed in this film because I don't, I guess I don't agree with you, Zod. Like I'm disappointed that they didn't take more risks with this film. I thought they played it too safe. I mean, I can I could definitely see where you're coming from with that. But two, you also have to understand we've been entrenched in this. And, and I'm going to talk about this more on my live stream with Killjoy because we had a, a discussion about this after he did his video and he did a breakdown of uh, fans in general, which I'm going to really dive into. It might piss people off, but I, I, I like doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but there's been this thing. And I think it's unfair if we're giving credits to both sides because we've seen fans screwed over. That that's a thing, Hollywood. Stop trying to stop trying to say it isn't. It is. You know what you're doing. But there is the other uh, end of it with fans and things that fans don't want to talk about, which is they're very fickle and they're very vicious in their comments. And I'm saying this out of a place that I love Dexter season nine. And I've been in a freaking Twitter battle trying to explain to people I'll never meet about why I think that was a better ending than season eight. And coming from that and then watching this, I kind of understand the message more. And I think it resonates with me more because I'm like, yeah, there is some truth into what's being said. It's like if you go completely one way, then people are on here bitching about how it's not how they remember, blah, blah, blah. If you go the other way, then, you know, um, people are going, oh, it, it's too it's too much the same. It's too similar. So it's like pick a lane, people. Um, you either want something new and you want something that tries something different or you want something that's just how you remember it, but you can't have it both ways because it's not fair to the creatives. And, and I, and when I see a creative that clearly cares, then I will take their side. Yeah. And I think let's make a distinction here. Um, are you referring to the creators, uh, people who like the directors and writers and producers who, who care about the franchises they're attached to, as opposed to, you know, people who just want to make a quick buck, like, because well, you could have specific. that, you could have that uh, same kind of argument for, um, I hate always bringing it up, but it somehow always comes up and, and all, all the channels were connected to, but, you know, you could say the same thing about, about Star Wars and the recent films, you know, you well, really well, could, but I, what, what's the to, difference because, between that? Because we're both Star Wars fans. I'm going to make a direct comparison because I think the movie warrants the reference because of clearly there, and we'll dive into that, but there is a reference to that. And, and yeah, I understood because let's, let's be honest. That's the best thing that people know about. That's the really hot button as far as fans go. Uh, all right. With, with this, I would be more on board with defending these directors and their decisions as opposed to, let's say, Ryan Johnson. OK, because hint, hint spoilers, <laughs> <laughs> because Ryan Johnson. And by the way, uh, after, after after this, um, I think we'll get into spoilers. Uh, I think that's fair. So go ahead. Yeah, uh, Ryan Johnson. OK, so let's just take these side by side, one for one comparison. 
Ryan Johnson came out, attacked fans, uh, basically said, this is what I'm doing. I don't really care about the Star Wars universe. If you don't like it, don't watch it. These guys, as far as I know, and I've watched interviews, cast interviews, things like that, they've never once said anything bad about fans at, or Wes Craven or his work. As a matter of fact, they've talked about how much they've been, they've been influenced by Wes Craven and the respect they have for the franchise and for the fans and things like that. And then seeing the movie, I do feel that. So I will say you have two very different scenarios, but what's going to happen is because of the climate, people are going to automatically jump into that divide. And like, I can understand McBrooklyn's point from like a filmmaking perspective. It does seem to play it more safe, but as a first movie, for them helming it, I can understand the need to ease people into uh, their style before they take it off into a different direction. Because there are some things that they do try in here that is vastly different. You can even go tonally with like how more straight they play this one as opposed to other ones. It, there's little changes that you can see they're testing the waters to see if people like it as opposed to the originals and i think it's kind of a smarter way to do it even if it's not as risky especially in this era you're you're easing people in because people aren't as uh experimental as they were say 20 and years they're not ago. as forgiving when and they're not as forgiving yeah when like, it comes to their favorite franchises it's like there's some sort of ownership and these are discussions that we've had uh for i think the last the last four years we've been discussing these kind of things and we remember being on on uh the side of the fence that got crapped on all the time because we didn't like a movie but but here here this this movie kind of uh now that i'm thinking about it it does take that approach and it is is very self-aware um when it comes to that uh so i think at this point i think i think at this point we could talk about spoilers so this is spoilers, so there we go. Um, I'll just be I'll just be straight up out of the gate. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Okay, all right. I think I made it clear. I think I made it clear. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Um, this is the worst killer reveal of the franchise uh, by far. Jack Quaid. We all fucking knew he was going to be the killer. He was way too obvious. And then the other killer, Amber, was like in the movie for like a few minutes. I was so mad about that. And their motive, when I first heard it, I'm like, really? You're going to blame toxic fans? This is ridiculous because toxic fans don't murder people. This is ridiculous. And when I saw that, I saw that twist. I'm like, ah, oh, man. This is because we, and I'm saying this right out of the, out of the gate, because we were just talking about it and I really want to get into it. So, uh, is it, I mean, and this will be kind of an open discussion. You guys can chime in whenever you want. No big deal. Um, but I, I, I'm, I was very, I was very disappointed with that. I thought it was kind of like a, it was a weak reveal. And I, I liked, I was starting to think that, you know, Jack Quaid was gonna, uh, his name's Richie, right? I think yes. so. Yeah. So I thought, you know, Richie, yeah, he's the killer, obviously. But then as it went on, I was thinking like, oh, is he actually not going to be the killer? Were we, were we misled the whole time? Nope. No, we, we got it right. But then the, uh, th this other bitch, she, she, I believe she does most of the killings. And, I, and I'm like this frail little girl. I don't believe it. It's um, unbelievable. And she was only in the movie before for like a few minutes and when they were uh, in, there's a scene where they're in, uh, where they're all like gathered around in their little powwow, talking about the rules and blah, blah, blah. And nobody mentions that this bitch lives in Stu Mocker's old house. Nobody. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So the killers were, you know, that whole thing, the whole motive. Uh, I didn't, I didn't like it, but I understand I understand where the, the directors and the writers, I, I get what they were going for. I just didn't think they really stuck the landing. I mean, like, is that fair to say? Like, what do you guys think? I, I 100% agree with you. I think this is, and look, like, there is no way to talk about this film 
without referencing Star Wars, uh, like or at least the sequels. This and film... let's get that out of the way too. Uh, they're they're making uh, in in the Scream universe. There's the Stab movies, and we already got uh, all like the seven Stab movies. Apparently, there hasn't been another one in ten years at this point. And then they finally they didn't make a movie off of the real events of Scream Four. So they just kind of left it alone. I guess that Stab 7 killed the franchise, if you will. Uh, I think this Halloween. was actually Stab 8, because that was another reference to The Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And it was directed by Ryan Johnson, if you yep. saw it. There's a, that, that one scene where the dude's eating pizza like has so many little Easter eggs, which I liked. And I was like, ooh, they're throwing shade at Ryan. I like this. I'm like I, I did like it. that because if you look at it, that was clear shade. I and this is where I say I feel like the discussion is balanced because the way they talk about it, they do talk about from both angles, which is why I didn't personally find this offensive. They talk about the extreme end, but they do talk about the Hollywood end because there's quite a few references in this movie about how Hollywood ruins a movie, how they go for cash. And you hear the YouTubers say how at this point, this feels like a cash grab. And, 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 you know, this is supposed to be, we'll say, the objective, because we know the media is not, but we'll, for argument's sake, say, say the objective media talking like, uh, you know, oh, it's brilliant. And then you have the fans who are disappointed. I think that was very well done in that particular scene, because that felt to me like, they were saying, yeah, there is points and probably with this film where Hollywood has a hand in what's being done. And so, as a director or a writer, you are really constrained by what the studio, how many times, how many franchises, even within Scream itself, has there been record on record interference by, by a studio where a movie is written, hell, even shot a particular way. And then in the editing process, the studio will come in and they'll butcher the movie. So I, I think the thing that kind of brought me on board the film and what they were saying was I never really felt, uh, unlike most movies, that the conversation was ever one-sided. There was always clear people who were on both sides. I feel like this was more of a, you get to the end and you go, okay you decide where you fall into this conversation. And to be perfectly honest, um, it would to me, it would be no different than how Wes Craven or Kevin Williams would have presented the argument. Because if you look at their films and what they talk about with sequels, prequels, remakes, they never really take a clear stance. They give you the situation, what the killers do, and then by the end of the movie, you're really left to decide okay, uh, where do I fall? And I think that factors in on the enjoyment of the film. These movies are constructed in a way, and that's where I say that this movie keeps a lot of the essence of what Screams are because they don't answer the question for you. Even if like it feels like they're answering it, they're not really. It's more of a bam, now you decide you know, where do you land in this topic? It doesn't ever feel like the creator is taking a stance one way or another. And I respect that kind of take for it, especially taking a shot at Ryan Johnson, because that was not a defense of him at all. That was oh, a no. clear, like, shot at Ryan. There's, like, no if ands, or buts about it. So clearly the directors weren't on his side or I'd even say Hollywood side at most points in the film. Well, I think that's what's so confusing about the twist and the reveal, because I agree with you. It's very clear that they're shitting on Ryan Johnson and Star Wars and specifically episode eight. There's the Chrome Dome ghost face mask, which is in Ryan Johnson's stab. Eight. Yep. <laughs> There's so many. Yeah, with the, ca the Captain Phasma's ghost face. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Phasma yeah, face. The oh, oh. <laughs> and you God, can see, I, I thought, I thought like, okay, so now you have ghost face in a bro tank <laughs> with the, with the Jeez, fucking was, flamethrower. Was... Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be uh, the jock character, uh, 
the Chad. I think his name actually is Chad. Yeah, uh, it Mason is. Gooding. Yeah, I think like that's where I, I was like being. I, I felt like that was clearly in the trailers, like being misled, you know, on purpose, which I thought was very cool. Um, but yeah, go ahead, carry on. Well, I I just because like if you're going they're they're attacking star wars right and so they're taking the side of what the crazy left-wing lunatics on twitter are you know the ray Lowe's on twitter that the, the defender of the sequels that you know these movies sucked basically they're taking direct shots at the movie yet every like story element from star wars is almost directly reintroduced here like uh richie and amber are basically Bi billy and Stu. they go back you know star wars had star killer base which was basically the death star they go back to Stu's house there are so many beats that are and they and they reference that in the film but then to make the killers toxic fans after you basically spent the first two thirds of the movie shitting on toxic fans or not shitting on toxic fans shitting on the movies that quote unquote toxic fans go after. Like it, it's just convoluted. Like it doesn't make sense. And then I, I, okay. I, I would disagree. I would say that it was more on saying, okay, there are fans who have a point and yes, directors get it wrong. They fuck up and they make terrible movies. I think that's the nod two thirds that they go. There's also there is a portion on the Internet that does exist that take it too far, that claim ownership, that will even attack people who are fans of the franchise because it doesn't go their way. And yeah, I agree yeah, with that's, that that's a good point, too, because then, you know, now that I'm, you know, I, I thought about it earlier Um you know, like a few, a couple of days ago, rethinking it, I'm like, well, you know, yeah, it's the first, the first uh, couple acts are them, you know, shitting on it uh, on, uh, on, you know, Hollywood and the, and the creators. It's like, okay, you guys have a good point fans, but then, you know, what it seems like is now the roles are, are reversed. And now it's like, okay, you know, it, it's almost like McBrooklyn. It's like, okay, now that it's happening, happening to you, it's happening to us um that's that's where we that's where we draw the line um for me it was really the execution of it that just kind of felt like uh it's in line with what the theme is but what doesn't really quite land for me is just how how the delivery of it was how, what they what they said i don't remember I've, we've only seen it we've all seen it just a couple of times just twice i remember ago. specifically it was on a reddit thread that these two met and uh, to be fair of i course totally it's on reddit <laughs> I, I totally buy it because if anyone's been on reddit i'm sorry i hate to use this word because i think it's very misused a lot but there is very toxic people on reddit and reddit threads they are cancerous. Uh, it is a terrible place to go. Um, and I've experienced it personally, whether you're talking video games, whether you're talking uh, even if you love a franchise, but you happen to like a particular episode or a particular movie, and it's not the popular opinion. Well, then, oh, you're not a true fan you blah 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 and it's like bitch i've been watching these movies since i was a kid don't sit here and come at me like i'm not a true fan because uh oh i don't agree with your uh very shallow take on you know what you see like i i i like to give people their due right like we can have a discussion like we're having right now no one's attacking anyone right yeah I, I can we'll see how this good, goes <laughs> <laughs> i can have a good that's a joke mcbrooklyn i don't think any i don't i don't think you're gonna do no that. no mcbrooklyn <laughs> seems very level um and and the yeah. way he's approaching it i completely and totally understand his points but on the other spectrum of it i do understand that very visceral response because like i said uh earlier I am in the Dexter community, been a Dexter fan for years, watched every single season when it premiered, suffered through eight. Thank God we had the end of Breaking Bad or that would have been a totally shitty year. 
Um, <laughs> that that would have been terrible for me. But then for people to come out and and they've literally attacked me on Twitter and in some of my reviews because I thought it was a good season and I liked the ending and people were like, oh, this is worse than eight and this is not how I would have done it and blah, blah, blah. It's like you're lucky they brought it back because they felt bad and they acknowledged (laughs) that they did something wrong and wanted to fix it. And they might not have perfectly stuck the landing, but I at least appreciate the attempt and the amount of detail and quality that they put into it. But it's like some people uh, get really possessive and newsflash. You guys didn't create it. You didn't create the original franchise. Uh, it's highly disrespectful to feel as if you have the right to tell people um, how to make their version of 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 the of their art. And and this does doesn't extend to this movie. This is Scream in general. I mean, we're talking about one of the greatest horror directors of all time. I will die on that hill, Wes Craven. Who I, I think he, that's fair to say. John Carpenter is up there um, yeah, as him, well. John but Carpenter, Wes Craven, Alandis. I mean, Wes Craven, you think like Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. You have, uh, I believe, The Last but, House on the Left. Um, but what's uh, but what's Red Red Eye great too. How many, uh, The Hills Have Eyes. How many people uh, besides critics – and I'm talking about you fans now who are uh, so venomous about your visceral opinion. How many people shit all over that man's work? And now you want to hail him as some kind of uh, a God whose work can't be touched. I find it hypocritical. And oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a thing in general that I have a problem with because, OK, West Craven is dead and now you love him. Michael mm-hmm. Jackson died. All of a sudden, you you love him. You know it. You know why does it take you know someone to die for you to appreciate what they did? It doesn't make any sense to me. You guys remember uh, the reaction to Scream Four? Uh, a lot of people were like, "Oh, this is terrible. This is the worst." You know, it was kind of like you know the George Lucas you know Star Wars prequels where everyone hated them, and now you know in retrospect they're like, "Okay, let's take a look back. Let's take a step back and let's actually see what he did." And it's like, okay, we get the concepts, terrible execution in the first uh, couple movies, but the third one kind of stuck the landing a lot more. And we appreciate it over time, especially when you get worse movies as it goes along. Scream 4 aged fairly well with talking about the dangers of of social media. Um, As uh, many people have mentioned, uh, how far you'll go to get internet famous for your 15 minutes of fame, which is just ridiculous you know why would you murder a bunch of people just to get fame you know silly and concept, that's what right? i feel about this ending it does it go to a kind of extreme yes but does it break anything in the universe not really because if you look at every movie this movie does what any scream movie has done they do a hyper kind of over stylistic uh point very poignant point at the end of every one of these movies you can track any scream always goes uh, that's like that's part of scream is they always go to the extreme ha rhymed uh, Uh. (laughs) (laughs) at the end of the film so i thought it was very in line to flipping it and going okay we gave you one side of the debate now boom here's the other side you know the killers are these super extreme and it's clear that they made a very big di- distinction between the normal fan base, the normal people who get on board and go, oh, yeah, you know, um, this was pretty good. Or, oh, yeah, they did shit all over this, but blah, blah, blah. And then you've got the extreme cases who are willing to kill to get their point across. And I really don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. Even if you track the first film, there's just literally, if you look it up, a scream killer, a dude who watched scream. He, 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 it said in court, it was his inspiration to go out and do killings. And he did them exactly like the film. Was this there, after there are, the first movie before scream Two? No, this was the first scream. No, 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 no. Did did that real life situation happen in between the movies? Yeah. And, okay. And so and that okay. So wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll have so to I'll have to go back and look, but yeah, look that would make Kevin Williamson even better with uh, the reveal of Mickey. Like that, like that. Wow. 
that's kind of cool. Fun uh, fact yeah, um, my my uh, bitchy, my girl just uh, referenced. Who was it? Mr. B A L L E N. Yeah, he he talks about it. Like, there's real life cases of people directly ripping off killers, and and, and openly in court. You can't even say, "Oh, movies didn't influence them." They stated in their court case that they were directly inspired by the film. So you do have people who will take it to that crazy length. And, and I and I believe, especially in this time, that I, I, I would not be shocked. I mean, look at Slender Man. We had the Slender Man killings. It was two girls who, who one was clearly disturbed, but the other one was just influenced by her friend that took it to an extreme over freaking Slender Man an urban legend that's not even a well it's a movie now it's but a video you guys game. get what i'm saying it was just a silly game that somebody came up with and someone took it to the extreme and that reminds me of a quote uh from the original screen by billy loomis he says no movies don't create psychos movies make psychos more creative mm -hmm. and i think that's that's where that that that's why i hail the original scream as like it is going to be the best of the franchise one of the best slasher movies of all time one of the best horror movies of all time murder mysteries uh which is it, which is so well done and executed because you kind of were like oh that's that's the case uh, that's another thing that i didn't like about uh richie's reveal is that um you know they waited a little too late to give some doubt um to it because he was always suspicious so was billy loomis but the way that they did it in the original was much clever I much more clever much more clever uh but with the, all of that analysis mcbrooklyn i i want to get your thoughts on just you know i, I know zod likes to talk a lot so <laughs> uh, uh, i'm sorry i'm a chatty oh host. no you're fine you're, no, you're <laughs> fine no it's okay but i really want to see like your side of it you know based on what you've been hearing um that's being discussed um like, well i want to go back to like a point you made which was about the killer reveals them like the actual reveals um because mm -hmm. we haven't really touched on that i mean we've talked about kind of the meta commentary for the most part but with the reveals i think i even mentioned to you uh, on a dm amber was totally misused in this film she's hardly in the she's like got like literally five minutes of screen time before she's revealed as the killer uh, at the end and obviously i think she's set up it, even if you go back and you you know you watch the end of the, the movie she's supposed to be the new stew and i think we all agree stew is the best killer out of the whole franchise and i think the actress could have pulled that off had she been given more screen time to be you know a really top-notch killer um and back to what you were saying with richie like I had Richie and Amber pegged from the get-go. Plus, like, again, with the marketing, we knew Amber was set on fire in the kitchen from the trailer. It's in the trailer. Like, and, you know, like, we're talking about how or the commentary, the meta commentary on how fandom works, right? They know fans analyze every second and every still of trailers, and they even went out to say, oh, well, we did a lot of misdirects and stuff in the marketing. No, you didn't. No, you Not didn't. Enough. Not enough. Not nearly like, enough. There's like a couple scenes that they didn't use in the movie that are in the trailer. But for the most part, everything in the trailer is pretty much there. And then, I mean, realistically, are you going to set... I mean, I know we're talking about gore and violence and all of that stuff being in this film or most people are anyway, I don't agree, but they think this is a more violent film. Are we really going to set one of the main characters at the end of the movie? It's clearly in Stu's kitchen on fire. I mean, like we had to know that that was going to be the killer or one of them and it's Amber. So I thought that totally gave that away. Um, and like with Richie, I, like you were saying, Justin, there was like no doubt for you that he was a killer until the end of the movie. I 100% agree with you. There was like five minutes when they got to Stu's house 
or Amber's house now, I guess, that I that I thought it'll always be Stu's house to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like it's it's the and I guess I don't understand this either. Maybe it's just Hollywood magic and they couldn't replicate the original garage. But like uh, Mindy and Amber, they go down into the like it's a basement, not a garage this time. I don't know if it's. Why do they call it the basement? It's a garage. They're going into the garage. Yeah, but it looks completely that. different. So I don't know if it's actually supposed to be a basement or if it is supposed to be the original garage. But either way, that scene is the only scene in the movie that got me going, huh? Well, I wonder if, you know, Amber's not the killer. Maybe it's Mindy. I always basically had Richie pegged, but, and I thought, well, maybe it's uh, Tara. And by the way, like another comment, like I thought some positives, which we'll get to like one, this is the best opening kill scene, or even though it's not a kill scene, but the opening scene since the original. And then also I thought all the cast was great with exception to Sam. <laughs> like I did not like Sam's character in this film. I thought she was up upstaged by Jenna Ortega's Tara uh mindy the meeks twins i thought chad and mindy were great i'm glad they survived and i i just like again i don't dislike sam but i don't think she was a standout out of the new cast i thought no no definitely not very the most very much the most uh vanilla yeah uh, she's just there well yeah she's there to be the new sydney but you have to give this quote-unquote new uh you know sydney of this new final girl uh, a little bit more personality um however her backstory is quite interesting which i did not see coming at all and it's it's quite interesting uh her the full name is sam carpenter but really <laughs> this is this is really funny i didn't i didn't even think about this at first but if she went with her real father's last name it's sam loomis <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, which I believe uh was wasn't that um it's a reference to uh Dr. Loomis from Yeah, Halloween. Dr. Loomis, which was a reference in Psycho. Right. Uh, yeah, I which will say is on the quite interesting. they really did hide that. But here's my issue, and, and this is a reason why I deducted a point. I did deduct points from this movie. I think I was sitting at like an eight out of ten. I think I'm gonna stay there, but uh, a big deduction for me and, and going to McBrooklyn with movie writing in general, I feel like while her subplot was a pretty nice little nod, it really goes nowhere. And that point of the movie kind of agitated me because there's so many things they could have done just story-wise in throwing off the audience into making them think maybe she's the one who's the killer instead of the killers trying to use that as a way to set up they could have toyed around with that aspect a little bit more than they did so i think for me while it was nice seeing ski Ulrich and uh the the de-aging did a hell of a great job as far as that goes I, I feel like the subplot in general unless they pick it back up in six because six is in production um, I, I think that that subplot and kind of playing around where how that factors in towards the end of the story was kind of wasted and a useless kind of thread because they could have done so much with her character. And, and I want to say, I will give credit to people who have this criticism. She is not a very good final girl. Um, I thought Jenny, uh, what was her name? Jenny Ortega. Yes. the sister was i thought she superior. was i i thought she was much better and should have been the final girl as opposed to the final girl because the range of emotions especially in that opening scene and, and uh what they could have did with her was uh, was a, a missed opportunity too so I'm, I'm not saying the movie does not have as far as story structure and, and the way things could have gone down, it doesn't have a, a few things that agitated me because there, and, and I think we talked about this, Justin, too. 
the, the underutilization, and this goes to your point, Mick, uh, Mick Brooklyn, the underutilization of characters was really frustrating because, look, Scream is built and based on dynamics of the group. The only way people buy into a Scream movie, which is why I think this is very divisive, is you have to care about the core group being introduced, like in four. There, there are so many characters there. I could tell you their names, what their backstory was, um, what their relationship was to each other within the group, how they all fit. And I think where this movie really drops the ball is that you don't have a strong group dynamic. So I cared about some of the characters, but I didn't care about all of the characters. And I think that's a really big flaw because when you have a movie that's based on a group dynamic and you don't have a strong connection to uh, at least like 90% of the group members or some kind of feelings towards them, even if you don't like the people within the group, then when somebody dies, or when an emotional scene happens, there's no impact because I'm not connected to everyone in this group. It's like certain people die and I'm like, oh, okay, well, didn't really know them. So I guess they're gone. Like, Yeah, I mean, some characters, that's that fine, but not all of them. And you know what? What's really, what really made me upset, and this is something that uh, I, I felt the, the very moment that it happened, um, I okay, so I was very excited to see uh, Dylan Minnette in this movie, and he's like one of the first ones to die. I'm like, what the fuck? Can Why? we talk about his kill scene too? Like, oh my god, I, was, it dragged a little bit. I feel like they kept faking us out, faking us out, faking us out because you know you just killed the sheriff in broad daylight. Yeah, and I how does he not kill. like? See I her. did too. That was fantastic. I mean, what the balls on. I'm imagining that that was Amber because Jack Quaid. I keep calling him Jack Quaid. <laughs> yeah, he's Sorry. in the hospital with uh, Sam. Yeah, um, so it had to have been Amber. I mean, the the balls on this crazy ass bitch. My my god, it's insane! Absolutely insane that you would do that. And not only that, you would linger outside and wait for for Dylan Minnette to open the door. Like that's like for like ten minutes. Like what? By that's the way, crazy. did you like his frosted tips that were a reference? Oh god, to, uh... that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I, I I will give it to you. Those, those frosted tips. I, I kept on thinking, and I'm sorry, Dylan Manette, I like you in Thirteen Reasons Why, but he looked like a douchebag and he needed to die. I'm sorry. There, I said it. No. The frosted tips. Uh, no, Justin. No, I disagreed. The frosted tips did it for me. Oh, I was like, "Oh, this motherfucker's no, douchebag no, 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 in this one." No, 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 no. no, no, there was no... frosted tips. No, no frosted tits. Oh, I mean. <laughs> 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 well, he does have a he does have a nude scene, but we didn't see anything. I was very disappointed with that. Yeah, uh, that was. I I don't understand why we didn't get any bare ass on that. This is no. There's no nudity. Film. What the fuck? No, <laughs> Actually, I know we never really see had Dylan nudity, so I don't butt. Care. You could have given us a butt shot. <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, there should have been a butt shot. Oh, Get yeah, something for the ladies and uh, for us, uh, you know, fellas who um, <clears throat> sometimes swing on the other side. Like that would be nice to get a little bit of. <laughs> I know how it would you talk about diversity. You excluded proper. Good job. Good yeah, job. I'm offended what the fuck? by that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I no, had a problem I'll... just with his kill scene, though, in general. Like, I mean, I think they were trying to get creative, right? Like, because is he stabbed in the cheek or the neck? Oh, he's stabbed in the neck. He's, okay. Yeah. And but I still really feel good. like that's not like he, that's all they showed, right? Like, he wasn't stabbed again after that. No, like I think um, he still could have lived through that. Like, uh, uh, no, Mick he'd Brooklyn? have to get one of those uh voice boxes. He might, uh, I mean, not to be too insensitive because I like this guy, but he, you know, he would have, you know, kind of sounded like Val Kilmer after, <laughs> after the next, uh, like, after in the, if he had survived, because that was pretty, uh, well, and pretty but where were the cops in this? Like, this is a small town, right? Like, it took that's had duty. like two incidents of mass murder. Yeah, well, I I mean, like, but Judy, like, they're on their way when Judy calls them from her car. So, and it takes her, what, three, four, 
minutes to get back home. Like, and then Ghostface or Amber, like, stalks Dylan for, like, 10 minutes in the house. Like, he showers, he gets out, he gets his sriracha sauce for their sushi, gets the plates, has the lemon square moment on the fridge, which I thought was great. That was um, a great callback. Right? Yeah. I um, almost forgot about that. I don't, I, I uh, was hinted at that Easter egg uh, from an interview, and so I watched Scream 4 again, and I'm like, oh, lemon squares are going to be referenced. And they yeah, don't taste like ass, apparently. That was honestly – I don't know how your guys – well, I don't know. Justin, did you see it in the theater? Scream 4? Um, I was a freshman in high school, and I just never got the chance to do it. Um, usually – I, like and I never really snuck into any movies except for The Hangover, which is if you're going to sneak into one movie in my generation, that That's was the one. one. So I already, <laughs> I already used mine. <laughs> Did you Zod see this scream, one? The theater, I have The Hangover, uh, McBrooklyn. I'm guessing you've snuck into a, a movie at least once. Um, yeah, I don't. Dude, okay, I'm never mind so that. old I can barely remember anymore. well well that's okay but no I didn't get to see Scream 4 in the theaters um but it, I did relate to it a little more because I was you know in, in high school at the same time as like the characters were but um uh, what about seeing it in theaters well like the only thing out of my two viewings that got any reaction in this movie was the lemon square bit that's it <laughs> And, and like that was another one of my big negatives, and I think Zod disagrees with me on this. Uh, I I didn't feel like there was any tension whatsoever in this film. Oh, like, I thought there was tension a lot. I, I think yeah, I, 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 think. I am I completely disagree. The tension was there because uh, I was. But to be fair, and we'll get to this in a little bit. There was a there's a certain character you know when. I knew who was going to die, but I just wasn't ready for it. It's kind of like, you know, that person that, you know, you know, that has a terminal illness and they're not going to, you know, be around much longer. But when it happens, you're still shocked. Uh, but at the same time, can you be like, can, is that really like shocking? Like, yes, but, you know, you just don't know when it's going to happen, but you know, it's coming. Um, but, uh, oh, shoot, I was I was thinking about <laughs> That's a little too much. I kind of lost track. What were we just talking about? Tension. Yes, the, the tension. Okay, so the tension was there uh, for sure. Not just with that, but with other aspects. Because I was still kind of guessing, like, because I already fingered one of them. Uh, wait, <laughs> wording, wording. <laughs> I I, uh, I pointed out one of the. Uh, I figured out who one of the killers were immediately. However, it was the second one that I that kept me guessing. Um, but that was just me. I mean, McBrooklyn is a as a detective. So you figured it out. But, well, it also, I but, mean, but I think instead of, it wasn't a lack of tension. It was a lack of comedy. There weren't that many laughs in this. Like there were a couple, but it wasn't as funny as the other ones, which made me kind of disappointed. I'll, so the script for this actually leaked in July. So it did. Yes. So like, I, I already it. knew Amber and Richie were the killers. But, oh, um, see, but, that kind but, of skewed well, a lot of I, it. like, you never know, right? Like, and it, it hilariously, it leaked on Reddit. Um, I think, <laughs> but why I think, am I, uh, why am I not surprised? Uh, well, I think you mentioned uh, you, is it Killjoy Jake that you do it with, Sod, that you've been, uh, uh, yeah, right? That's well, I think he even tomorrow, yeah, well, I think he might have covered it. And everybody, that was the other thing, like with predictability, like everybody was predicting Amber and Richie, whether it was from the marketing material or that. Um, and there were just so many things like even the I was surprised by the Billy reveal, but even that was leaked because one of the actors tagged Skeet on Instagram and then immediately uh. deleted the post. So there's like. And that's one of the things, like, I had forgotten about it, but that did Oh, happen. yeah, guys. Skeet Ulrich is in the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But, uh um, By the way, that was a... So, I am so glad that I, you know, didn't follow a lot of these people in social media and I didn't look at the leads. Yeah. Because at least, you know, there were a couple of good... There's a handful of good surprises. Like, Skeet Ulrich being in the movie, I was like, holy shit, he's a lot... Not alive. He's, like, he's here... 
Like, I thought you were going to bring back uh, Matthew Lillard. I thought that was something that 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 was going to happen. But no, you brought back Skeet Ulrich? Holy shit. I, I did not see that coming. I was surprised. I'm sorry well, you got it spoiled. They, they definitely set it up to where they could bring back Matthew Lillard. But back to Zod's point about the Billy, uh, I guess, hallucinations that uh, Sam is having. I think that part of the movie is, I, I know you didn't really get a payoff with it, but I think that's intentionally there to set up the f future of where they can go. Yeah, I was saying that in my review, McBur uh, McBurkland, just because of how loose that thread is. Yeah. I feel like that's something they want to play around with in, in the future, and maybe we'll see Matthew Lillard. Uh, hint, hint, cough, cough. Pe directors, if you ever come across us. Uh, Please. Six. In production, he's not doing anything. You can easily get him. Him and yeah. Hayden. Well, did you see the Easter egg for him? There's a uh, couple Easter eggs. That was a, those were good surprises too. There were there were a few different ones. Just you know, when Richie's eating pizza, who thought a guy eating pizza and watching YouTube would yeah. reveal so much? Thanks, but, Pizza Hut. So first off, yes, thank you, Pizza Hut. <laughs> they they got I think the best. Um, um, uh, product placement out of any yeah. <laughs> anybody in this movie first on, like on youtube you had the ryan johnson easter egg you have the i don't what did it say about about Stu? uh oh, so that's a podcast that it, it just has the the title of the video is just it did Stu mocker survive or something like that's the name of the video and See, then i would they find they that, that ridiculous I would find that ridiculous just because if you look at that kill and me and Justin were debating this last night, look, a television fell on his head. I believe he was jolting around like he got uh, electrocuted, which means that the inside of it broke and he was stabbed repeatedly. And like I, I, I mean, I was in the service. Uh, I, I recognized one of the stabs. That's a pretty lethal spot unless you get help immediately. You could bleed out and under... Uh, three minutes. So I refuse to believe unless it's very well explained that he could have survived all that. But to the point, there is a funny thing they could use to play around with this. And there is a rule established in the Scream universe and in most horror movies that the killer is not dead unless you shoot them in the head and you physically watch them die. And they walked away from him to kill um billy billy so i i think they can't they they do have a window but it would have to be explained like really well and make sense or it could it could be either a it, it's one of those things that could be a holy shit moment and really elevate a movie or it could kill any cool things you could have done with it and, and that's my issue with this film is yeah. that like you said, Mick Brooklyn, to your point, and you have a valid point. There is a lot of opportunity in this movie. I will fully admit, despite my shilling, I will be doing for this film. Um, I'm sorry. It's just one of those things. I, I, I can be biased. I'm a human. I'll admit it. Um, but it is one of those things I do acknowledge is that there is a lot of opportunities in this movie that was missed. I don't agree with your uh, your sentiment on tension. I think there were a lot of tension parts, especially with the sheriff. And I'll tell you why. As a parent, that whole scene to me was probably the most anxiety I got because I could very much place myself in her shoes. And hats off to, I forgot the actress's name. That, Mary that Sheldon. Played, yeah. She and does she was in a, Scream 4. I didn't like her as much in Scream 4. She was a very I didn't red either. That, that was what really amazed me about this because I felt her tension. And I think to the point of why people find it brutal. Look, one thing that's always going to get people, especially if you're a parent, is when you see another parent struggling to, to save their kid and they fail. I think that was a very effective kill. I think the fact that it was in broad daylight was a very ballsy and, and, and great scene. That part of the scene, I, I didn't like the Lamanette thing, but that part of the scene I think was very well done because I could feel that moment of tension 
And I'm not even going to lie. Like in the theater, I said, oh shit, oh shit, get back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then you're, you're right there. And just the way uh, she looks up and the noises she makes, that, that was a very well acted scene and very heartbreaking. I, I think that was for me hit pretty hard because just because I could put myself in the place of that person and be like, yeah, this isn't like the rest of the people. She is fighting for her, her child. She's, she's fighting to get back to her kid and then to see her totally and utterly fail. Uh, and, and it's realistic too. Cause let's be real in real life. These things don't turn out right. You know, everybody likes the Hollywood ending where the protagonists will get there just in time and they'll save them and they'll be, but I think this movie did a good job of saying, Hey, the, that shit doesn't always go that way. You have a point where you're not in time where you die. And I thought that was a good setup to let people know that like, Hey, we're going to take out people you like, like it's going to happen. We, we, we got the balls to do it and we're going to go there. And setting that up right before Dewey, I thought that, that that the initial setup was at least pretty well done because that uh, if and if you look at into the context of the next scene, which I think we should talk about the Dewey scene, I think mm-hmm. it's a very good lead in to letting people know like, yeah, we're going to take out somebody you like. And for me at first, I thought this was going to be like, oh, Wait, they're not gonna take out Dewey because they're that she's an OG character. People know her. Okay, we we've, we've had her killed, but nope, they go, they they do a twofer. So when you think about it, they took out two OG characters in the span of like ten minutes. I just me personally thought that that initial setup was pretty well done. Yeah, and uh, you know, McBrooklyn, you're talking about like uh, you were ta- saying earlier, like taking risks. I mean, that's I I would I would argue that that's pretty risky. But I don't it think was... it was a risk just because I think we all expected, at least in Dewey's case, I think most people expected him to bite the bullet in this. Especially with the marketing, you know, yeah. for sure. I, but, it, you know, it's also like, you know, it was it was his time. You well, know, like yeah, had, I mean, but he, going had, to... he wasn't supposed to live in the first movie. So he was right. You know, yeah. I mean, to Zod's point, though, like one of yeah. the things about like having this be like more realistic that I wanted to see. And I think Killjoy Jake has mentioned this too. A lot of people have mentioned this, that they want to see is for the killers to actually win in one of these movies. Now this probably wasn't the best movie for that just because they're trying to set up, you know, to reboot it, if you will, so that we can get sequels, which, this looks like it's definitely going to get officially green lit soon. Uh, oh, it did. The, yeah, it did. It did. And uh, I, I would like to see a Scream 7. You know, this could be like its own, like, sort of trilogy. Yeah, its own trilogy. And that's, that's what I, and I think maybe the next movie, you know, that could happen. You yeah, know, that, where you end on like a cliffhanger kind of thing. That would be so great. And, and can we can, can we go back to 4 for a second? Because this kind of ties into what you're saying, Mick Brooklyn. I don't know if most people knew or uh, um, I'm I'm a huge Scream fan and I follow this shit very religiously. And Wes Craven, uh, the original ending to Scream 4, if people don't know, and it's out there, you can look it up. Um, Wes Craven had the original ending that that killer, I fucking forget her name. Jill. I always, Jill. Yeah, Jill. Uh, they had it where the hospital scene cut off. So it was just... And the dialogue was slightly different. They say that um, it doesn't look like Sydney's going to wake up. And then the end shot is Jill smiling. And that was supposed to be the original ending for Scream that 4. That so good. Oh, man. And then the, and that then the alterna- alternative Scream 5 would have been even better. Because then then you would have... Because uh, I don't think Jill revealed herself to, to Kirby, Hayden Penetier, who, by the way, is alive... We yep. knew it. We we're so, yeah, I was so that, happy that, to see she, that. She that was knew. the third uh, Easter egg that we forgot to talk about earlier. That's great. Um, but man, what an interesting move! Like if they went to college together, and she, and Kirby has no idea because I don't think she revealed herself to her. 
Yeah, they wanted to leave Nev Campbell in like I'd say like a, a coma and kind of make it ambiguous that Jill didn't go after her because of the fact that they were in the hospital and she did. She kind of like was like, oh, she's gonna die anyways. That was the original ending, but then the studio came in. Thank you, studio. Once again, new line. Um, they came in and they told Wes Craven he had to change the ending because it was too bleak. Isn't that fucking ironic considering the tone of this movie? Like that was, uh, so when you brought that up, I, I had to throw that in there, McBrooklyn, because it was originally supposed to end in a cliffhanger. Wes Craven said himself before he passed and the studio made him change it because they thought it was too dark. Thank you, Harvey Weinstein. <sighs> fucking yeah. Crazy. Well, there's the script in three change from meddling two, and twice actually. And I think both both scripts can be used in the future, but um, elements of it sh- definitely. Yeah, but before we get to that, since that's in the future, um, back to Dewey's death. Um, I don't know, J- Justin. You really had a hard time with this, right? <laughs> um. Well, considering that I cannot look at Scream Two again, that because that was one of my favorite scenes was with uh, Randy and Dewey talking about the rules of the sequel that was my favorite scene and those are my two favorite characters of of the franchise i love all the characters but those two were like uh those that was i saw myself personality wise in in randy you know randy was the voice of the audience as well so when they killed off randy that was like killing off uh, i've been i've heard this comparison a few times it was like killing the voice of the audience which you know really you know, as Wes Craven has said, you know, that was, that was his biggest regret. Um, and, uh, that never left me. And so all that, all, and the goofiness of, of Dewey, like, you know, if now, if you'll excuse me, I have some oozing to do like one of the best lines and funniest lines in that entire movie. There's a lot of funny lines. Um, but those two characters, I saw myself in in a mixture of both of them, you know, that that naive cop like who's like kind of undermined, uh, you know, and underrated, you know, he really is like an underdog. And um, and that really it really upset me that, you know, he went off. He, he died because of a phone call. I'm like, really, really? That's how you do it. And, and I, I would be the hero. this a little bit differently. And I explained this to proper and Mick Brooklyn. I, I don't know. Uh, what your take is, it's going to be on my thoughts, but I saw it as that he knew he was going to die because it's very clear foreshadowing because there's a line and I think it's intentionally put in there where like he, he shoots the killer, right. And they all go to the elevator and um, he's like, Oh, wait a second. You got to shoot him in the head. And uh, what's her face? Uh, Samantha. Is it? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't the like the main character, so I forget her name. Um, he says <laughs> that's how I know I don't like her. I don't um, think anybody likes. Everybody prefers Jenna Ortega's Tara, which I think they really should make her the the new girl. But anyway, they do. Yeah, I, I hope they do too. Because Jenna Ortega, I've been saying this since you season two. She's a fucking amazing actress. I called it ha. Anyways, um. I think that at least in my mind, I think he knew he was going to die or expected it or hell, maybe given the context of his character in this movie, wanted it because I said it like this. Look at the breakdown. He's got nerve damage in his arm, which can't move. Uh, He's got a limp from the last movie where he got stabbed basically at the base of his spine. Um, He's uh, he was asked to step down as sheriff. When he Why? has that talk with Gail, hmm. he talks about how he feels useless to people. And she's trying to, like, give him a pep talk. Like, you know, you're the person who's who's the kindest. And she even references that later. And I think he wanted to go out on his own terms. Like, yeah, I, instead maybe of he wasn't a 100% it. ready to mm-hmm. die. But if he did, it would be like, okay, I did it double-checking. And, and not being a fuck up. And that's how I took that scene. And I especially, my favorite shot probably in this whole movie, and yes, I know it's in the trailer. Thank you for spoiling it. But I love that shot of him letting the bullets fall to the floor 
and then putting in a new new batch of bullets. I think that's a very good shot visually. I think it's very effective. I think it would have been more effective if the damn promotional material didn't give away so much. Yeah. Um, and they Which and you see it for the first time. My only gripe with this scene, and I also told Justice this too, is that I do not buy any hospital in America being this <laughs> empty. I think that's total bullshit, especially in an emergency situation, given like real life protocols. There would not be just one guard posted, even in the town of Woodsboro, especially in the town of Woodsboro. And why, why is it that all of the slasher films, the hospitals are just right? completely empty? <laughs> Except for Halloween Kills. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah there's a shit film. ton of people there. <laughs> Point, points to Halloween Kills, which I also had on my top ten list. Like oh, that was a movie I didn't movie. like at first uh, because of the very ending, but then I and it really was just down to geography that when I saw in the theater, I was like, oh, okay, and it was a misunderstanding of my but I love that movie. Yeah, but. like. Points to that because, uh, yeah, that's really, especially in a, when you have a situation of a killer killing these people, there would be family members and everything else. So, yeah, uh, there were some pretty big dis, uh, dispensions of disbelief, and it could have possibly uh, been a bit more realistic, like if the killer caused some kind of like emergency in the hospital where they had to vacate the floor or something like that. I think that's just like a minor detail that was overlooked just for the uh, aesthetic. So I yeah, do recognize yeah, there's a lot of flaws so. in that. And nobody is hearing anything. I know most of the patients, like they're they're hospitalized. So like they're in their rooms and shit and they're in pain yeah, or whatever. Really <laughs> you get, know, they like, can't how exactly many go out and the help. hospital has. So you can't say who's hearing what. I don't. Well, she should have been in the thing. ICU too though, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I would get. Uh, well, no, because she was in recovery, right? She, yeah, she was, they gave well, her the still, wheelchair. Though, and like you're still in ICU usually, right? Because she just got out of surgery, right? Um. Well, it had been a few days. She was. She was. Yeah, she was in recovery. But the the point is that there there aren't any staff members at all. Like, just no one is going to come out. Like, is everyone just kind of like? No one called the police at all. No one was on that floor. Is she just on an isolated floor? I don't, I don't get it. Did she rent it out or something? What this? Like what the fuck? I don't, I don't get that. I, I hate. I'm starting to hate hospital scenes just because of yeah. how stupid they are. And yeah, like I, 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 and I can totally get behind the kind of setup. Now, I, like this could be intentionally done because once again this does play on horror tropes and that and we've all stated that is one big horror trope where you have the person in the hospital and the killer comes after them mm -hmm. that's like a that's like a staple in horror movies um but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to fall into the trope there's a difference between doing the trope and kind of mocking it versus actually falling into the trope which unfortunately uh that was another deduction for me like that was very clearly you like needed the scene to happen that way so it was clearly set up that way and that kind of takes you out of it when you know it's a setup yeah but, yeah and see that's that's another thing that made me upset about the way dewey went out and you know uh is that uh it's the whole circumstances that, that that were around it that that really bothered me. The motivation to go there, that I understood that, um, but just uh, the the way that it was that that it was drawn out, the fact that they, you know, again, this is what Scream does occasionally. They'll play into the tropes and then, you know, also like mock them at the same time but they like if you're gonna mock it, it 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 almost seemed hypocritical from like a meta standpoint but what are you gonna do at the same time what are you gonna do just uh be meta the whole time no um and as much as i i love that shot of dewey i was just like really dewey like come on you got distracted by a phone call that's how you went out well, that and... plays into his character because remember how many times in the movies has he kind of made a mistake where we've all said, oh, 
that should have definitely been the point where he died. I could pick spots in three, four, two, one. He, that was a play like, okay, the feeling I got from his character, which, by the way, I, I thought his character, uh, shout out to David Arquette, hell of an actor. That, Great. I think he gave the best performance oh, oh, oh. out of everybody. Without a doubt, far. because we're all talking about how angry or disappointed we are. And it's intentional because the actor did a great job. And, and he's done I a great think, job for the past 25 years. Uh, I think this is his best performance, though. I would Absolutely. That. What do you think, uh, Mike Brooklyn? What do you think of David Arquette's performance in this one? Yeah, I liked him. Um, I was going to ask, do you like what they did with his character, though? Like, Because I, I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I went the screening. The first screening I went to, they did a and a and he was there. He was the. You went to a screen with a Q and A. That's fucking yeah, that's hell. Awesome, that's man. amazing. I'm jealous of you. So they he was there. Uh, so they Kevin got to Williams. ask him questions after the movie. Yeah. So after that the, is so fucking amazing, dude. So he was there. Kevin Williamson was there, and then uh, holy shit, one of the directors. But anyway, like he had mentioned, David, that he had. In the initial script, he had issues with it because I guess it was going to be much more apparent that he was like much more of like a drunk and much harder down on his luck. And I guess they kind of reworked it a little bit. Like obviously when he's in his, it's a trailer, right? I think. And he's mm -hmm. got his liquor bottles kind of sitting around when he's getting his coffee before he watches uh, Gale on TV at the morning show. But like, do you guys, is that something like that you felt like his character would evolve to that he would get that depressive and yeah, yeah like I, and that's where the star Wars comparisons come in again, the Jake Skywalker comparisons. Cause you I know, think, he's kind of living isolated. Comparison. Hold on, Zod. Hold on a second. No. <laughs> so I, I got to explain this real quick. So I understand where that comparison comes from. It's like a mixture of, you know, Force Awakens Han and Last Jedi, Luke, Jake, whatever, um, where um, he's a, like a hermit. He tells people to go away, get off my lawn. Um, you know, he's depressed. Uh, you know, Dewey and Gal got divorced, which is, you know, a nice reflection on what happened in real life. Kind of like Scream 4 where they got married and they were happy and stuff. Well, maybe not always happy. He's married to Gal, but, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> the so um, and, and then he doesn't really have it. Like he has a phone call with, with uh, Sydney, but they don't actually share any real screen time together. Like in person, he only like talked to Gail in person. So I guess that's that Han Solo comparison where he didn't really talk to Luke at all. I don't know. I can kind of see it, but then like he has that redemption and then he dies because he went out on his own terms kind of like Luke did in The Last Jedi, but, like, that was also different because he just kind of poofed, and I'm like, are you serious? Like, yeah. <laughs> like the, that was worse, but uh, I can see the comparison. I really can. Me, though, I think this is kind of a, a nod to doing it right, and I, I'll explain why. Because... Ooh, is, I like where this is going. Yeah, there is a clear redemption of the character. So if you take Han and you take Luke as a, once again, for everybody, so that I can make my point side-by-side side comparisons, because if we're going that route, let's really dive into it. Han became a shittier person. I don't care what anyone says, and I've had this argument with Chris Knight. Like, he he devolved, and uh, Jake Skywalker went too far over because Ryan Johnson doesn't know how to fucking write. That's a, that's a stream for another day. Um... So there were too much of an upswing. The difference here is that there is actually a arc. Writers, this is called character development, right? Your character starts at its lowest point, and then they, in, in some way, whether it be big or small, have a redemption. And this was, to me, a clear redemption. He starts in one place where he's drinking. He doesn't want to be bothered. He's not going to do this shit again. It's all, it's already wrecked his life. Uh, he's lost his job. He's lost his woman. I dare say almost a will to live. Uh, poor guy wanted to give him a hug since like the first frame. Um, 
And then as he's talking with these kids and he's kind of feeling where they're coming from and, and becoming like that mentor figure, he he has that doubt because remember, he wasn't going to get into the car with her. And then he talks to Gail and he's like, like fuck it. He is like, I, I got it. I'm a part of this. I've got to do it. And right there, that's the character shift. And you don't get that in Star Wars. There's no point where Luke makes a shift. There's kind of a point for Han, but it's very clumsily executed, JJ. So the the execution, at least for Dewey, I felt was spot on because there's the clear you can follow this from the beginning and see the lowest point and the ending him actually going out being the character we know him as selfless putting himself before the group that when he lets them go he probably realizes that he messed up and that the killer is still alive he is very much in real danger and and he knows that that's why he tells them to go and, and don't worry about me right he says that he looks back he goes don't worry about me i'll be fine and and lets them go in the elevator. That's the nod. Like, and then she he, says, "I don't give a fuck." Like, or, or no, goes, she, no, she, she says, says uh, I, "Like, who gives a fuck?" And then what yeah. does he say? Yeah, he goes. Uh, I can't remember what he says back, but then he smiles. Did you catch that when he when he looks back? No, them, I didn't. Does, yeah, know, he like, just what? says, "I do," and smirks. Yeah, he says, "I do," and he smirks, and that's yeah. that nod to old school Dewey, like. That that's a little bit of return of the optimism, like saying, like, yeah, I'm the guy who puts myself at risk. I might never get like the kudos that and really think about his character. His character should be commended in so many of those movies, the way he throws himself into danger. And I think that that was uh, very well done and kind of a really respectful nod. Uh yeah, yeah. Um I can see where you're coming from. Um at the at the same time I'm just maybe maybe my perspective was just, you know, empty hospital and I'm just disappointed that it actually happened um in general. And that was probably the intention of the directors and the writers. I mean, McBrooklyn, you know, um now thinking about the arc about uh of of Dewey I mean, do you think that was fitting or like, like uh, what would you have done differently? Cause I know you didn't like it either. Well, I don't really have a, I wouldn't say I don't have a problem with his death. Cause I knew it was coming. Um, I guess I just, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen Dewey a little bit more like his, you know, normal self throughout the other four films. I actually, thought gail was very underutilized in this film felt like he was she was just there um but i do the one thing with his kid there's two things with that kill scene with dewey one i really like the back and forth like so before he shoots amber he's he's like struggling with her knife and he like headbutts her i think and before he headbutts her he goes not today and then he headbutts her and he gets her like up and then he shoots her. And then he goes and we have the elevator scene and then he goes back and then she kills him and she goes, yes, today. And I thought that was like a great like back and forth. That's almost like talking to us, the audience, like, oh, thank God they're not going to kill Dewey. And then they're like, yeah, we were just fucking kidding. We're going to kill Dewey today. Um, I also like the the, the second part to that because you missed the my favorite probably line in the film where it's an it's honor. Go, it's been an honor. I yeah. I thought too. I thought that twist, was going to be in the phone call like or something like, oh, man. I, yeah, I but thought used it for Dewey. Way, that was very respectful because if you think about it, that's a direct message to the fans from the directors like really think about it they're not shitting on the character they're like saying you put up a good fight you almost had me it was an honor to go go into this battle with you that's how i took it and i was like oh okay that that that's cool at least the killer acknowledged like because the killer doesn't acknowledge any of the other ones until we get to the very end right 
So the fact that, like, randomly in the middle of this, it's like, yeah, you put up a good fight. You almost had me. Not today. You know, thanks for playing kind of a thing. I, I thought that that was a very cool sort of nod to put in. Well, the other thing with this scene that 100% for me, conf- like, I was 100% Richie's a killer, that when they're leaving, after, first of all, he was just, like, knocked out, which I don't really have... I know a lot of people have been talking about that as that was their point that they knew he was a killer in on it. I I can believe that, but my issue is, and it's subtle and maybe it's just because, you know, like us, we overanalyze everything and we're looking for this type of stuff, but he, he, Richie turns and looks at Amber after she's like, you know, played out in the like, bulletin board glass or whatever it was she went into and he looks concerned like holy shit is she dead like am i is am i you know like left alone now or whatever and i'm like yep he's totally in on it i don't know if you guys caught that or not but oh that's like really subtle yeah yeah so i'm probably gonna go to the theater and see it a third time uh to really get you know it with these kind of movies it takes a few viewings to really you know see like the first oh no come back uh i was just seeing if that fixed my mic oh it didn't uh but it's okay you know it's fine um (laughs) cut it out i'll we'll, we'll fix it in post um, <laughs> what were you saying, McCrooklyn? The, the famous last words. <laughs> what did you just say, McCrooklyn? You were you were saying. Um... Well, you were talking about um, the subtlety of of. Richie. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to see it a third time to get uh, all of the. I'm definitely gonna have to see it in the theater for a third time just to get all of the little subtle details. Um, also, um, when I watched it the texts were all in a different language. So I must've missed a lot of stuff. <laughs> it would be nice to see it in English. Um, but uh, no, but all, all, uh, all jokes aside, um, you know, those kind of little things uh, really do add up. Um, but uh, I did not notice that at first. That that was a, that's a very good point. Um, was there anything else that really, really, so we talked about the major things I, I feel I feel like we did. Um, you know, the the twins surviving when they give the thumbs up. I like that. You know, it was kind of a, you know, nod to Dewey in the first one. You know, I'm kind of surprised that they had Chad survive because he was bleeding out most of the night. Um, in it, it, it was, uh, you know, it was nice to see. You know, Randy's niece. Uh, uh, you know his, you know his niece and nephew uh, survive. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um the the uh the sisters surviving okay um at least you have more survivors because that's 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 the thing with with scream is that you they they tend to kill everyone off um you know uh in the movie like scream four made that mistake of literally killing off everybody yeah and you have no one else to like really go and continue the series with because that's you know the, the this whole franchise is about character yeah, it's about characters and it's about like whether or not you care about them and we well, also their development. build the characters over m- more than one film. One of the reasons we love the OG three is because we've had four movies with them, right? Like uh, prior. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and you had uh, Randy being more developed in Scream 2. You had Cotton Weary having an arc in Scream 2 and surviving and then seeing yep. where he ends up. It's nice to see like, hey, let's catch up with our old friends. It's nice. Uh, it was nice to see uh, Martha back. They, they had the same actress come back as uh, the mother of the uh, of the twins. Yeah. Heather that, was, that was nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, th- there was one other um there's one other person that, that I I uh, was thinking about. Maybe it'll come back to me. But um, well, I wanted just... to ask on that. So, like, if we look towards the future as to what they could do, do you? I was thinking about this kind of last night into today. For Scream Six, would you be okay with them not having Gail or Nev? No, I'd be fine with like maybe a cameo um i 
I think at this point they've kind of earned either exiting or being killed. Most definitely, if I had to make a prediction, I'll probably kill Gale off at some point. Um, Nev should definitely not be touched because of the whole family dynamic. I think it would be more fitting if, like, you know, they kind of slowly exit her out. Because, I mean, when you think about their ages, my God, they were how old when I went to see the first Scream? And now uh, they were about... well. Well, Courtney Cox was uh, two seasons, two three seasons into Friends. <laughs> yeah, if we're doing, the yeah, movie, yeah, they, they were worried that they because of how Monica was, you know, you, you know, she, you can't play a bitch. I'm like, uh, yeah, she can, <laughs> and she's the baddest bitch of them all. Gail Weathers, fuck yeah, weather reporter. I, I think that, <laughs> I, and and yeah. Mick Brooklyn. I don't know if you feel this this way, but my personal opinion. I think for a new director debut of taking over an established franchise, uh, A, it could have went far worse, and B, this felt more like a stepping stone. I feel like the one to get hyped about is six, because now they're going to have feedback, they're going to look at all of the criticisms and things, and they they kind of uh, have established footing. So. So now I feel like being knowing the directors that they are, I feel like they're the type of directors who are only going to get better with this franchise. Uh, like most people have to remember, uh, this is their first time doing an established franchise. And if we're being real, how many directors have we seen, <coughs> Ryan, come into an established fr- <laughs> franchise and not be able to execute anything right uh, and, multiple, and i don't think that there's multiple times in that. i mean so multiple many times, times right so many yeah. times i i think that this to me felt like um not to downplay the movie but felt like a stepping stone into something well, i that think that's potentially be great where my disappointment comes in is that it feels like a stepping stone like i wanted and maybe that's just like an amalgamation of me as a fan of this franchise and then all of the critics and and literally Cody. everybody praising it too like these yeah YouTubers like, like overhyped the fuck out of this movie i'm like guys chill the fuck out like it's 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 not like it's still a scream movie but jesus yeah it's not we scream say the 1996 <laughs> Oh man, I, I feel like you know. It's, I, I was just watching, you know, someone um, uh, a couple days ago who dropped a video saying, like, you know, all these YouTubers just said this, and the Twitter people just just praise the movie so they can get their tweets in the in, in the trailer. <laughs> like, yeah, really? Cody. <laughs> yeah. But what were you gonna say? Yeah, no, like that's one hundred percent what Cody Leach said. Like, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. like the f- like. There are better ways to get your Twitter, you know, quotes on the movie poster than like hyping it up as this like once in a generation film. Like this is not it. Again, I'll go with like I think I even said it at the beginning. Like this felt like a scream movie. That's not a problem that I had with it. So the director succeeded in that. I just felt I was underwhelmed. And maybe that's because of what the critics were saying and my own hype that I had built it up into. But I don't know. Like, I do, I 100% think the future, they have so many different directions that they could go um, that they set yeah. up, yeah. whether it's like they Cobra Kai it, where, like, because they can, you know, kind of sprinkle in legacy characters, whether it's Kirby, whether they have, it's... They have a few that they can still work with. I think I made a list of people that are still alive, which well, yeah, is they only like about uh, 10. <laughs> Sydney's married to King Cade. It's like they dropped that. Yeah, in. that was that was a great a great little Easter egg. Uh, the uh, LAPD guy from uh, who survived Scream 3, and he had a cast, you know, saying, let's watch a movie. And I was like, why is this guy like here? I guess, you know, they had some sort of connection in scream three there was like a scene where they really like got each other um but yeah that that was so nice to see that they got married and they like oh i'm taking the girls to school so they have a few kids now i don't know like they didn't mention it in scream four at all 
guess it was never right. brought up. I guess Mark was not privy to the situation. <laughs> if they g- didn't get together, <laughs> like, <laughs> but there it had been like, ten years, so you know, there was like, plenty of time yeah, for I, them I, to reconnect and everything. So I totally understand that they must be young because he, you know, uh, but but it is what it is. I I know he's alive. You have um, Kirby. Yeah, uh, you have Kirby. You have Joel, the cameraman from the second movie, which is like the last bit of comic relief you <laughs> that's alive in this universe. It's like brothers don't last long in situations like this. Oh yeah, he God. was like he he got he got out of there. Yeah. So see the thing, and what I would say to people who may, maybe have uh, like been and overly disappointed, I would factor in expectations and not seeing like what they're trying to do. And I understand and that frustration. It's like when it's hyped up and, and let's be real guys, let's blame this on who should be blamed. The media, uh, they went and overhyped the hell out of this. And we all know why mainly because of the toxic fandom bit uh, buzzwords. Yeah. A, we get to be All relevant right. again. Now we have. Uh, I have to address this on stream. We have like. Uh, there's something wrong with Sod's <laughs> Ethernet cable. Like it kind of crackles and then he speeds up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's okay. Sorry about no, that. No, no, it's a, it, it's totally fine. Uh, but um, I, but, I yeah. really want to hear the point, but I don't think we're going to be able to hear it on the stream. <laughs> well, it's totally, it's okay. Yeah. It's totally fine because this is not live. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, I can do some things, but um, I I do. We are reaching that two hour mark, which I didn't think we were going to. But um, was there anything else uh, that you guys wanted to mention, like positives or gripes about the movie before we get into predictions? Like, uh, well, stream. I wanted to know what what was your guys' favorite kill scene in the movie? Um, you know what? I don't know, Zod. I would have to say my favorite kill scene is not a kill scene. Uh, and, and this is the part of the movie that was ruined. No, the question was Thank the favorite you. kill scene. No. <laughs> no, no um, you can a- answer that first and then go to the favorite scene. Uh, well, I mean, technically it almost was like, okay, if I say kill scene, I would have to, oh God, I'm tied between two. Um. I we need a translator. would have to say the scene with the sheriff just because uh and I put Dewey second because the sheriff scene as a parent I felt the tension there where most people may not have but if you are a parent and the way that actress played it uh kudos she did a hell of a job making us care about that character because for only the short time she was in it and then you were like Oh my God! Please don't. <laughs> Where am I? Uh, please don't. Um, yeah, I couldn't help myself. Uh, uh, please don't um, die. And then, like, you know, she gets right there. I yeah, think I, people... I, uh, I completely agree. Uh, you, you know, the, the 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 killing them in broad daylight, you know, and then having the balls to stick around outside the house oh yeah that's a hell while of he's a walking movie. while he, the dylan is i i know his name is wes which is it's cute you know i like that it was a nice little subtle thing um but hey, uh, i'm gonna see if i can jump back into this so that i don't sound like a robot oh no it's okay maybe maybe restart something it'll it's fine we'll uh um we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out you can restart your laptop or something whatever you need to do you know it's just it, it is what it is We'll we'll have right, like um, a, a thing that says technical difficulties. Da 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 da. So take your time. It's all good. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be right back. All right, cool. Yeah, he literally thought, said, uh, "I'll be right back. I'll uh-oh. be right back." <laughs> <laughs> we have to, you know. Here's the thing: we we have to have a laugh at some point. Um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, honestly, yeah, uh, seeing uh, Judy Hicks just kidding, <laughs> I thought that was, like, very, very vicious and brutal. And that's maybe when they, when people are saying, like, the gore, it's just, like, it's the way, it's not what you say, the way you say it is what matters. And the way that uh, 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 that, that that was done, I'm like, 
oh man, like, you know, as much as I shit on Amber as a character, as a killer, whoo, oh, yeah, she's definitely brutal. Um, she is brutal. But well, I'm that's like, why I think, like, for me, my favorite kill was uh, Sam killing Richie. Because I thought that when she just goes full Billy mode and just, like, fucks his ass up and then she, like, just slits his throat at the end. Like, what, that, what was... I, I, I didn't count that because I was only really thinking about the oh, victims. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. But if we're talking about that, yeah. Um, Amber's death was very unsatisfying because she just went on a rant of, oh, I'm going to kill, like, I killed Dewey. <laughs> and I'm like, really salt in the wound. And that made me think, oh, my God. My two favorite characters in this franchise were killed by women. Women ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would say I like that because you got a double kill by Nev Campbell and uh, Courtney Cox. Yeah, yeah, but but okay, you sound so much better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> robot Good. Zod is now gone. All right. Um. Oh my God! This, I'm gonna have so. I think I'm gonna have to put this off until tomorrow to like release it because holy shit, <laughs> this was this was great. Oh man! But um, yeah. Uh, the utilization of Skeet Ulrich. He was only in like three scenes, but it was great. Um, and uh, um, would you have uh, so like in the future, it, it, would you actually have like? Cause I'm wondering about this. Cause you know, like we said, everybody kind of prefers Jenna to Sam. So do you think if they switch the final girl trope from Sam to Jenna, that they could have Sam go nuts in one of the movies? Like, because I, I've seen a lot Ooh. of people talk about it, like how she has like mental illness and she has hallucinations that they don't know if they'll want to touch that, like have her go crazy just because of the social commentary on it. But to me, like that's what makes scream scream is the commentary on stuff like that. In real yeah. Life. Yeah. So, so here's, here's the thing. Now we're getting into predictions. We've talked about the movie. We could go on it forever. We've gone nearly two hours, which I didn't think we would do, but I kind of knew in the back of my head, we definitely could. Uh, but yeah. Um, so yes and no, that's, that's a different approach. And this is something that the writers are going to have to think about is that you know you have to change it up at some point because right now as it stands it's just the same sort of meta commentary and then killers their motivations have been interesting so far but i think they've they've run that dry with the two killer thing especially the one killer in scream which is lame I'm sorry <laughs> but uh after after all this time you would think at some point something would be a little different. You would have a killer win or you'd have a hero who turned out to be a villain um, that you knew earlier, not like Roman, who was like the secret third killer that no one knew and Sydney never met before that bullshit. Um, you know, then you have, uh, uh, I thought, I thought that it would be interesting because I kind of saw it. If I, uh, if Jenna Ortega, was like the secret third killer. That's yeah, why they I was thinking the that too. But it's I, in the I, back I, of my mind, uh, definitely. Um, but I, I wonder if they didn't want to do that because of Jill and Scream Four. Like it would be too similar. Mm -hmm. But having it further down the line, as she's like the mastermind coming up with the plan, because I think there's a motive to it. You know, like she actually has a motive. Um, well, also she, too, let's let's see. Let's workshop this for a second. Also, Je too, Tara, remember her comments because you got me thinking about this. Thanks a lot. Remember her comments when she talks about elevated horror and how it's more highbrow than like typical slashers. Mm -hmm. So that would kind of be a nice way to bring about the difference in horror genre in general and how you have elevated horror that totally deals with more realistic things and, and like the basically my favorite reference and they referenced it in the movie shout out uh the babadook deals Babadook. there's a monster 
there there is a creature in that film but 90 percent of the movie is about mental illness and what that does and then adding in a supernatural factor so i think that it would be kind of cool making her a mastermind in the sense that um she could be like oh yeah this is like elevated horror and high concept like the victim is actually the person behind everything like I, I yeah, think that and that's so why that's why out. she was she was in the room alone with a killer. And what did Richie decide to do? Dress up as Ghostface for a second and try to scare Sam? Like what the fuck? That was weird. Like what the fuck was with that scene? Unless <laughs> it's explained, you know, they're setting something up for the next movie, which I hope they do. And if and that's why I've come to the conclusion. That Tara is probably, and these are predictions for, you know, we're just speculating. This I might actually clip this because this is quite interesting. It's fascinating to me that you have a killer in the room and they decide to scare the other person who walked outside of it. The, and there is a certain scene where like, oh, we're getting out of Woodsboro. And then she has that smile. But she has not like a, a good like. I hey, I'm on the same page as you. It, it's like a smile that's like, yes, this is going according to plan. You know, kind of like uh, the, the the avatar that I have right now. It's just like, yeah, it was that kind of smile. You know, that I uh, really got me. So well, here's that the other on thing. top of you know, they didn't actually kill her in the opening, and that's never been done before. Um, and so. And there, there's a myriad of other things that I could, uh, that I would have to, I wish I had wrote down our conversation just like of, of the reasons, but it just, to me, like, why would they tie her up um, and then just not kill her? They just tied her up for no reason. When did they do that? Who did that? When she's tied up in the closet. So I think it would be so interesting that, oh, the motive, the motive is what's, I think is, is going to really like and i i'm calling this right now and i hope i'm right and if i am right i think we should make a bet <laughs> or something like that i don't know uh if you guys are down with it but uh some sort of bet we'll set it up uh, or even on the stream who knows but i'm betting that her being the mastermind because her motive is when they have that scene with tara and sam and Sam finally tells her why she left, why she left, like disappeared after their, after um, her biological dad left. Um, re it's uh, reflective on, you know, Billy Loomis's uh, motive for, you know, like your slut mother was fucking my father. And that's the reason my mom left and abandoned me. And that was great acting. And Stu didn't even realize that. <laughs> uh, the, that's, that's another conversation for another day. But, man, wouldn't it be interesting if Tara found out already? Because how the fuck is Richie? Rich, how the fuck did Richie know about it? And how did Amber know about that? If Before Tara, if yeah, that's Tara a great point. didn't tell her and read the diary herself and realize that. And then she just reacted that way, pretending that she didn't know even though she secretly knows. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. And I really hope that's the angle that they go with, because I think that would be the smartest move from a writing perspective. Like she already knew she was just bullshitting. And like you had multiple scenes where all uh, like the two killers were in the scene together. Like after, uh, you know, Richie randomly attacks, Sam in the hospital, then he takes off the costume. I don't know where, where did the fuck do they put the costumes, by the way? And they don't find it. It is ridiculous to me, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Movie magic. You know, they, they should have a search warrant at this point. Um, but I don't know. Uh, fuck it. It's a movie, whatever. Um, but man, would that be a great twist. And so I want to lead this into what, what do you guys think is going to happen uh, in in the next movie, do you think they're setting it up for a movie like like for two other movies? Is this going to be like the rebooted Halloween? Like what 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 do you guys think is going to happen uh, further down the line? Um, McBrooklyn, I want to get your thoughts uh, on 
Actually, I'll, like, what do you think about the theory of, of, of Tara being the mastermind? Well, it's, de- I mean, I know I definitely mentioned it to you. I like, I was suspecting kind of even hoping for a third killer in this movie to be revealed just because I felt like it was so predictable. Um, and like I said, like, it didn't make sense to me how like Tara's like why she survived the opening kill because like the, what was it? Richie or Amber? I can't remember which one, but their it goal was, was yeah, their goal was to get uh, Sarah or uh, Sam to come back to uh, Woodsboro. Right. Well, you didn't need to not kill Tara for that. In fact, I would argue it'd been more likely that she would have come back if she was actually dead. Right. Cause you would have a funeral and all that kind of stuff. So that never really made sense as to why they kept her alive. Um, and I was just like, she was just so Jenna Ortega was so good in the role, like with the, the emotion and the innocence, it just like watching it felt like there's something more to her that they're not like revealing yet. So I 100%, think that could be a way they go but i also think like i said you've got the mental illness thing going on with sam that they can explore whether they choose to have her you know turn into a villain and also like i really think these directors love scream 3 which probably hurt some people but i know like in an interview they were asked who their favorite killers were other than Billy and Stu. And one of them had mentioned Roman and that they might want to explore that possibility. And I know Zod had mentioned this. And I think, you know, there were originally, there were two different scripts for Scream uh, 3. One had Stu as the killer and he was basically in a mental hospital or in jail or somewhere. And he had like a cult following that he was like communicating with, with fan mail, which they then retconned because of Columbine. Well, you know, they scrapped it. um, But uh, I, I, you know, he was in jail and I think Matthew Lillard was the one who talked about it, but no one else. uh, I don't think Wes ever commented on it. Um, And they were like a few weeks. uh, They were about like like six weeks away from shooting or something like that. Uh, so, and he got paid for it too. Like he already got paid for Scream Three, for a movie that he's not even in. And by the way, Matthew Lillard is in Scream Two. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, know. I don't even fucking know. Like, like I, I think that's just kind of. Are, like are we thing. thinking like, maybe Matthew Lillard has already been contacted? Like, are we think- I think? I'm so. thinking they just- met him on Reddit. Oh, if Skeet Ulrich oh. can keep a secret, I know that Matthew Lillard can definitely keep a secret. You know, uh, like, like those two have definitely texted each other and been like, "Oh, you're gonna be in Scream 5? Like, oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, yeah, but guess what they have in store for you? Hey, I also <laughs> think that they could explore because, if I'm not mistaken, Angelina was supposed to be the second killer in Scream Three. And they scrapped that. Angelina, um, that was the actress who played, who was going to play Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. And like, even her, like, her kill scenes kind of blah. So, like, I could see them bringing her back just to kind of, I guess, tie in Scream 3 or to try to make Scream 3. Because everybody, I like Scream 3, but everybody I know hates it. Like, I, I don't know, hate it, don't but one of them just, one of them has to be your least favorite. So well, yeah. yeah, I I don't hate the Scream Three per se. Um, I just uh you know doing critiques for as long as I've been doing and, and things. I recognize breaks in story, and that movie, especially on the back end, has a very clear schism in the storytelling where you could feel where things are different. And it kind of takes you out of the movie. So, like, I could feel where there were, like, rewrites and changes, and and particularly towards the latter half. I thought the premise was pretty interesting and that there was more of a mystery. Probably the best mystery out of the the four of them. Uh, Well, well, yeah, because, you know, 
there, there were... They, they were looking for clues and stuff. Like it was the first Scream movie where there was actually a real investigation. Like, well, it was more of an investigation than the other two movies because uh, uh, yeah, the, the original was... Scream had an investigation and that was interesting. Um, you know, with the, yeah, 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 the it sheriff at the time, really call it that. Like the police didn't really do that much. Until I, I would, the I would call it an investigation. You know, especially you know, a lot of people are traumatized with, um, you know, what happened to Maureen Prescott and and all that. So you know, I think there's some validity to that. But again, again, what I want to emphasize is because you know we are going to wrap it up pretty soon. Uh, within the next, hopefully, the next you know ten minutes, because I know you guys got to do stuff in a little bit. Um, so it's totally up to you guys, but I'm really am trying to emphasize, uh, I'm trying, I, I, I'm trying to emphasize, you know, like, what do you think is going to happen? Like going forward? Cause the five movies that we now, now it's five movies. We're going into six. It's been green lit. Where can they go from this? What do you want to see? What do you think they're going to go with? I've already told you that, you know, the main thing that I, that I'm seeing is that, you know, maybe, you know, I, I would hope that Stu would come back because, again, hey, he was going to come back in three. I know, Zod, you, you don't like that idea, but it would I, have I to be a really good reason, you know. I but... don't like that idea unless there's a really great, like, I think I, I, it's in the cards. Work. They brought back Skeet Ulrich. They're yeah, good. I, I, I think feel like for, they should bring back Matthew Lillard. I, I you know, the most I, I entertaining to person in this entire franchise. Like, my God, in the last installment, uh, whatever that might be, six or seven, I don't know. But my God, would I just be blown away uh, because Matthew Lillard has really, you know, uh, really solidified himself as a real character actor um, as he's always been, but you know, he's matured in it and he like, you know, he kind of knew what he was doing, but he was just so off the rails in the first one, but you know, well, to, to I, have I have him with a, the career that he's had and learning what he's learned. Oh my God. I, I cannot like, I, I can't get that out of my head. I really want that to happen. I really want to see, you know, him, you know, meet Kirby or something like that. I don't know, something interesting, you know, because the formula of Scream has become its own formula, you know, with the rules of the movies, blah, blah, blah. Um, the only thing that'd be challenging is like, what are the rules of this one? You know, but I'm like, you know, at some point it's like, you have to, you know, shed that skin because it is kind of holding you back. And I feel like that's been, you know, because they've been just very safe with all the movies, you know, like one killer or two killers, and then the revealed. It's like its own little trope. So I want to see something out of the box, like really out of the box. So this next movie, I think they're going to go outside the box, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but at least they'll try something. Tara, like I, I understand McBrooklyn, you know. The, I think we can agree that one of the Carpenter sisters is probably going to be a killer or like, you know, turn into psychopath. Uh, they're trying to foreshadow that with Sam, but I think that's, again, what Scream does best is subvert expectations in the best ways possible. So that being said, Tara is a more likely candidate for me uh, personally, but what I really want to see is something different. And so I want to, I really want to know what you guys think, you know, it, it is possible either from like all the surviving characters who can come back. Um, and uh, then, then we'll conclude this whole uh, story because this has been a lot of fun. You know, this has been one of the most fun conversations I've had in a while. Uh, so um, whoever wants to chime in with their predictions, go for it. Zod, do you want to go? I think I, I kind of, you haven't really kind of said anything about where you think it could go yet. Well, all you said, McBrooklyn, was just, you know, Sam, you know, potentially being the killer. Do you want to well, make yeah, it? Yeah, and I think I, I think they I think they're going to bring back Stu. I do. I don't think it'll necessarily be in the next movie, but I, I think they're like from the Easter egg with the YouTube thing to their love affair with Wes, right? 
like honoring Wes and having that original screen three uh, potentially coming in. And um, I, I don't know. Like, I think I agree with you. I want to see something different. So whether that's three killers, whether that's they only kill two out of three, or there's a cliffhanger, or they kill all the killers, but then there's it's like I said, there's revealed to be a mastermind, which could be Stu or something. Like they've got to change it up. Like that's I think part of my disappointment with this film is that there wasn't enough of a change up. It was just kind of more of the same. Um, and then obviously, like we talked about, I didn't really like the reveals, but um, yeah, like I just, they have a lot of avenues that they could go. So I don't know if okay. Zod dipped or. No, he's no, right here. My, uh, uh, okay. my internet is being a son of a bitch right now. No, it's okay. So we were talking about predictions and um, I, I, you know, you haven't really talked about what you think is going to happen in the next movie or the next two movies i think it's going to be two more but i could be wrong so what do you where do they go from here where do you think they're going to go and where do you want them to go i would like for them to be ballsy and tackle mental illness i think it's very relevant i think it can be done very well if anybody knows my just a spoiler for my top 10 for 2019 one of my favorite movies probably i put it of all time is joker and I think it uh, it would be interesting to see another movie that has the balls to tackle mental illness in that kind of a way. Um, and I would like them to do that with the Sam character because I think when she was acting crazy was the best performance uh, from her in this movie. I Agreed. think that she doesn't do well as a protagonist, but as an antagonist struggling with Billy Loomis's voice in the back of her head, I think she would knock it out of the park just based on that final kill scene. That's like, I think they need to flip it and make her the antagonist. And then if you really want Matthew Lillard, I would like to see him come back but as a voice to her, like in real life, comes back if he's he's going to make like a real life debut. I would because it would be like the, the dynamic he had with Loomis, but through his daughter. And I think that would make the most sense for him being back. It would be a connection between the the new cast and the old. And it would be kind of like a Cobra Kai thing with Crease, right? he would have an influence over her and be like, I knew your father, blah, 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 play it like a friend and kind of manipulate her into murdering people. Do you think Stu could like to take the reverse of that, go after her since she's Billy's daughter, just as kind of like a revenge thing? Cause I mean, like we talked about it earlier. I don't really necessarily think what would have killed Stu if he's dead would have been the TV. It would have been all of the, the electricity, the the blood loss. Well, it's the blood loss from Billy fucking him up. I mean, like, I mean, and, you could even go that angle. That'd be interesting, right? It'd be like essentially by proxy, best friends going after each other. Um, and remember that tension in the first movie where, um, where he's like, "Give me the knife." No. Yeah. Give me the knife. You know that that kind of little subtle thing and then he does it anyways because he's a he's more of a follower but after after that and him barely hanging on life let's just say he's barely hanging on life maybe just maybe he like he he realizes that and he realizes you know like there's a and they've teased the fact that you know they were possibly gay i don't really know maybe they, they had a very strong bromance for sure yeah, i don't think so but maybe more on Stu's end than Billy's. Well, what if or he uh, starts out helping her and then it devolves and he kind of has a flash he, to Billy. Yeah, but but first off, like public information and everything, like they declare him dead, and you know, people are speculating that he's alive, like Elvis is alive. That's well, a what possibility. if like, in Scream Six they flip it where Sam 
she doesn't necessarily become the villain, but like she has another episode where she goes nuts at the end of the film and then they like institutionalize her and then she ends up in like the same institution as Stu. That would be oh, that would be that'd be balls. I, I'd I'd like to see that. That'd be a hell of an ending. And then like that's the cliffhanger I mean, in no, seven is you see them. Don't rush me. Her. <laughs> I would I would rather see I would rather see um Sam overcome that and become you know because yeah the actress you know she was she was she wasn't great but I feel like you know a lot of people you know new new actors you know you kind of have to find your place I feel like she's still in that stage where she's finding her place and where to and how to she needs a little bit more experience, and I think with with this last film, you know, I, I I see her having a better future, learning from it instead of like I really hope people don't just attack her and just say like, oh, she's a terrible actress and crap like that. Well, that goes back to the whole point of the film, which I will die on that hill <laughs> with, <laughs> with the commentary. <laughs> Because I've you know, I have we, seen we a lot have, of but, nasty comments yeah, about but, her you know, If we're talking about real character motivations, you know, having her sister be the one to you know, because when you go back to mental illness, which is a good point, you know, having her younger sister manipulate her, it's like unexpected because it's your younger sibling. You know, if your younger sibling, like you're supposed to be the older one, more experienced and know more. But when the younger person, like uh, the the younger siblings. Sometimes uh, they will learn from the mistakes of their older siblings and know not to do that or not to do this or whatever, not to repeat history. And if they're psychotic, you know, what a twist, you know, like everyone has that little part of them where it's like, oh man, I, I just want to fucking strangle you. You know, there's always that little part of you that's just like, oh my God, like if someone says something, but we're more civilized, uh, you know. We won't punch someone in the face in public, you know. <laughs> oh, that—that's you. You, you guys. Oh no, uh, no, no. I mean, no, <laughs> no. You've never, you've never once, you know, have been like blatantly insulted, you know, in front of, you know, people and been embarrassed, and you're just like, oh my god, you son of a bitch. Like, I just want to death uh, you yeah, right now. All the time on late night talks. I mean, yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> no, in general, in general, though, I feel like that's a basic human instinct um so you know everyone has that part of them uh but it's like what whether you you deal with it correctly or you know you you uh it, it's just you know and this is what's interesting about humans is just like how you deal with your natural animalistic behaviors or not animalistic that's the wrong word but your uh you know, the, your instincts, I guess, because uh, sometimes, you know, it goes back to mental illness. Um, maybe uh, it would be so much more interesting if Sam overcame her mental illness, you know, developing as a character, you know, actually being the new Cindy. Cindy, I'm getting <laughs> scary movie now, confused. <laughs> Sid, being the new Sydney, but like having more um unique struggles which makes her a more interesting character to follow and then at that point you're you're not so upset with the absence of of sydney whether she's you know alive or whether she's not in the movie like i don't know but it's uh, you know always og sydney but you know i'm just thinking about different ideas of how it can work you Maybe don't think I... that they would oh, like scream to this again where they bring in one of their parents as a killer Oh God! I hope not. No, hope. not the mother or the or, or the, the father that abandoned. Well, because well, they mentioned the mom was a drunk. Was it? Because that's how they found out, right? That she was uh, Billy's kid. Was that yeah. uh, the mom was a drunk or whatever? And it makes sense because you know Sydney wouldn't wouldn't sleep with Billy for the longest time. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna fuck other women then. Yeah, and he probably he was going to kill her for what over a year because he killed the mother a year before the whole thing with Sydney. So I don't, 
I don't know. Yeah, there is that time gap where you really don't know what he was doing, what he was laying down before the events of even Scream. So, yeah, um, I, I mean, I do have to go here very shortly. but No, it's I, okay. We're, we're wrapping yeah. it up. So, yeah, I did want to say one last thing. I think that people who judge this movie really harshly, um, I would say everybody is wrong for one simple reason. If this wasn't a good put together movie and, and I'm saying take, take out the overhype from media and YouTubers, we do that. Um, but the fact that so many people are engaged in conversation, uh, split one way or another, or just talking about this, I think this really signifies to the fact that this is a good movie because bad movies uh, unless they're uh, Last Jedi, um, typically you won't talk about a bad movie. You won't reference it. You won't remember it. And I would say with any of these screams, really, uh, even Scream 3, the most loathed, right, by most people, it, the fact that it still gets you talking speaks to how this movie is made, that uh, we're still making predictions. There's still people I feel genuinely excited based on what was set up here, where it could go. And I think that is a testament and, and the movie should be recognized for that, that this does in a sense, give fans a renewed sense of hope for the future. And is that necessarily a bad thing? No, I mean, I think I'm going to be curious uh, how this movie ages uh, because mm -hmm. I didn't like Scream 4 on initial viewing, and now it's my second favorite of the franchise. I think that movie has aged like fine wine. So, oh, I 100% agree with you. 100%. Oh, yeah. It's my second favorite, too. It, 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 it's my third favorite, but that's only because I like Scream 2 a lot, even though it broke my heart. And now this movie also broke my heart, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what what's going to happen at this point uh, because it's – not a really, I mean, it is ahead of its time, but it's ahead of its time in terms of addressing the issues with Hollywood and fandoms and playing both sides. Um, but with the next movie, um, I don't know how they're going to address any meta sort of stuff. Um, but I don't want to like have the writers or the directors being forced to do that. Because, you know, at this point, all I want to see is a story at this point. Like, let's let's drop the whole, like, not entirely, but let's let, let's take a back step and like you know backseat a little bit and just let, let's let's see how these characters would would naturally go, or let let's have something interesting with the characters and not focus so much on formula, you know, and having the same thing. Let's Let's actually do something that would be interesting um, instead of the same old thing. That's that's my whole thing with it. And at this point, you know, it's a good start to what I think could be a good potential trilogy of new movies. You know, I I am looking forward to the next movie. And my conclusion is like, I don't think it's the worst. I don't know, McBrooklyn, uh, you know, the, I was I was torn, but that was just my initial reaction. But, you know, I also didn't like Halloween Kills at first because of the ending. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I kind of understand it. But it all kind of, much like The Force Awakens, it all kind of depends on what happens next. And if what happens next really kicks our asses in the best way possible with really, really giving it like, you know, a good kick in the pants, having a killer be successful and getting away with it or something like that, something new, something interesting, not like, Oh, we get caught and then we tell our motivations, blah, 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 blah. And we always explain it to Sydney because we have to do that. Just like, why don't you just kill Sydney? You've had so many opportunities to just shoot her in the head and have it be done. But no, you want to make a theatric out of it. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, by I, by the I way, if anybody's watching way. this, please don't actually do that. But anyways, yeah, I, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you guys, uh, you know, for coming on. Uh, did you guys enjoy this? Yeah, man, it was fun. 
Uh, yeah, I, I've never met Mick Berkwin, and uh, I I totally like, uh, I, while I disagree with some of uh, his points, I do highly agree with a lot, and we're kind of bonded by both thinking Scream 4 is like the second best. Um, thank you. I thought I was alone in this world, <laughs> uh, so I appreciate that, but uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the talk, and I think that there needs to be more conversation like this. Uh, let's get past the whole viciously attacking things and things like that. And let's just have a discussion. Cause I think when we talk about it like this, everybody raised great points. And at the end of the day, this movie to me does what a film should do. Uh, opens discussion and is highly subjected to your perfect personal preference. I think at the end of the day, the enjoyment of this film comes down to where you land subjectively and not so much objectively, because objectively the filmmaking has a couple of flaws, but it's not uh, overtly bad. It's a very well shot movie. There's good pacing. There's good line delivery. It As a movie, it's constructed in a way you should construct a movie. I think 90% of this film is going to fall into the camp of subjectivity. So let's be nice. Let's, you know, not get at each other's throat. And, and uh, like you said, let's see where it goes. Because I think this is, they're in a very good position. And what happens next is going to directly affect this movie. Like if they nail it out of the park, the next one, a lot of people are going to look back on this and go, oh, okay, it all makes sense. If they don't, they're going to say, I knew it from the beginning and it sucked, blah, blah, blah. So, Or or it could be like, oh, man, what a missed opportunity. Yeah, so I, I say um, it's a good start. It's a good start. It's a good setup. It's a good beginning point for them, and I give them points for that. Yeah, um, so with Scream 6, Greenlit, duology with Scream 5, Scream 6, or would you go trilogy? That's the last question. Yes or no? Trilogy. Trilogy, definitely. I'm done it always ends in a trilogy. We'll have two more after this. Uh, <laughs> 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 We're going to reunite when Scream 6 comes out. And hopefully there will be a Scream 7. Um, by the way, I, I wish that YouTubers had more nuanced uh, conversations like I think we had today. So, um, yeah. And maybe I'll just release this uncut with no edits or anything because i i thoroughly enjoyed this thank you thank you guys uh mcbrooklyn and and zod for uh to uh for uh coming on today and for everyone watching i'm sorry if you thought this was a live stream it's not <laughs> <laughs> but i will if you send super chats i'll read them on thursday for this week in bullshit do you guys have to plug anything uh I mean, McBrooklyn, do you have anything before I go on my long tangent? Um, yeah, if you guys like hockey, um, I I run the Writing the Pine uh, Twitter handle. It's at Writing the Pine Twenty One. Uh, my YouTube channel, which is where that stuff is, is uh, Killer Podcasts. Um, and then eventually, one of these days, once I get a camera and some stuff, I'm gonna start doing some more movie content uh, with all the stuff i'm basically like a robert meyer burnett i got hot toys i got physical media up the ass so eventually i'll get there but yeah so if you want to follow me or subscribe uh my personal twitter is locked so um if i don't know you i don't really follow uh you or anything like that but youtube channel killer podcasts uh the hockey channel or page do you have a public twitter. twitter that that people can reach you uh well I, I have the writing the pine 21 that's usually what i'm on there is a killer podcast um twitter account but since i haven't really used the channel all that much i'm not very active over there on that but uh yeah writing the pine 21 is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me okay all right and uh zod go ahead um, you all can find me at Mr. Zod's Phantom Zone here on YouTube. My Twitter is there. I believe it's at General Zod or at G E N Zod. Um, it, it, it's over there. Click on it. Um, I will be doing this Tuesday um, a in-depth analysis of my own with uh, Killjoy Jake. 
Um, and we're going to dive into the movie, but more of the discussion about the message and fandom and us being both pretty big into the horror community. We're going to talk about more of the uh, the aspects of fandom and the good and the bad about it and how this movie uh, relates to that topic. And I think it's going to be a very interesting, maybe inflammatory discussion. Who knows? But I revel in that. And I uh, would love to get feedback from you guys on like kind of how we tackle that issue, because I think it does need to be discussed um, on both sides and uh, fairly, you know, down the middle, but acknowledging both sides of the debate yeah, yeah and i would think mo much like this stream i think we were all would you guys agree we were fair with this movie oh this, oh this absolutely movie. yeah absolutely all right. and I, that's I, that's I, what i, I strive for this. you know actual productive conversations you know we're not insulting each other you know we could we could be like oh like wait wait what what are you thinking like what what the heck is that yeah like uh, you know if it's ridiculous but we're all reasonable people so i think you know, I hope somebody listens to this and takes some ideas or concepts into account. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people will, you know, be, I feel like this is more divisive than, you know, people think, you know, on initial reaction. But I think at the end of the day, this is a good grounds for a starting point of a trilogy. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it turns out that way. Um, the box office is looking good so far. And you know what? Since Scream Six is greenlit, you know what? I'll see you. I'll see you guys in a few years. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm kidding. This is a great conversation. Thank you for everybody uh, who's tuned in, and thank you, McBrooklyn. Uh, it was great finally talking to you. And Zod, you're a racist. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>